All right. And so with that, uh, Bochen, do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, let's start with the introduction. Uh, my name is Bochen Bai. I'm the co-organizer of this meetup. I work for a gaming company called Skills, and I'm in uh, Coquitlam area. So welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to Luke. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Luke. Uh, I'm a Rust hobbyist. I don't use Rust in my day-to-day -day work. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Jane and I'm not working right now and looking for some opportunity in the fall. Cool. Yep. Yep. another person here. Um... Chris Miller, would you like to go next? Sure. I'm Chris. I live in Seattle, work in Seattle. Uh, we do some Rust at work, uh, most of the operating system stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's go to Chad Doherty. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, so uh, I, hi, I, I work in, uh, I live and work in Pittsburgh. I'm, uh, uh, I guess, a, a Rust hobbyist. I'm not using it professionally yet. Um, and I work in uh, academia. Oh, cool. Um, let's go to Ralph. Ralph Giles. Yes. Hi, I'm Ralph. I, uh, I did use Rust professionally when I worked at uh, Mozilla up until a couple of years ago, but I haven't really used it since, except for hobby projects. Oh, wow. Um, let's see. Mark Wilson? Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Mark. Uh, I program mostly in uh, Go, but I'm uh, also trying to learn Rust, so it looks very interesting. Thanks. Cool. Uh, Marcio Ordonez? Hello guys, I'm Marcio. I'm from Brazil, uh, and I, I work for a startup here, and I use Rust in my daily basis. So I'm a full stack software engineer here. I use Rust, Python, and TypeScript for the last for the past one year. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. Good to see uh, someone actually using Rust in production. Um, we'll go to Kevin Dan. Do you want to give an introduction? All right, I think maybe not. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Jesus. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, it's, yeah, Jesus or Jesus or Jesus is fine. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Jesus. Uh, I've been a software developer for like three or four years now, um, mostly in Python, although recently I switched to Rust and Java, but Rust is just an amateur thing. Although today I did work on an internal tool in my company in Rust. So <laughs> I work in Rust professionally like one or two days out of a year. So it's a step. Cool. Um, out of curiosity, what kind of tool were you uh, building? It's an internal tool for QA testers. Uh, it's just uh, aggregates a bunch of uh, HTTP responses um, mm. just to test canaries, uh, validation and stuff. Cool. Uh, we'll go to Peter. Hi, I've been learning Rust for the last 10 months and I had it on my mind for one more year before. And what I like about the the newest updates is uh, or rules for um, a macro by example macro rules <laughs> of two Jonathan all right and I think last but not least we have uh, Oliver hi can you hear me yep yep okay I'm Oliver Rubenaka I work uh, I'm a software engineer at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard in Cambridge Massachusetts that's a big research institution for, for, uh, focused on genomics. And I actually write apps to crunch some data so in Rust. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Cool. So uh, 
the floor is yours, Evgeny. If you want to uh, get started, you can uh, share your screen and uh, start presenting. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Can you see my desktop? Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Yegeni. I live in Richmond, BC, and work for press reader company as a C sharp programmer. For today, I've got seven algorithmic problems with my solutions written in Rust. Uh, I decided to choose uh, the problems of easy and medium level uh, because I want to show more problems than I would do uh, with uh, hard ones. Um, excuse me if the problems are too easy for you. And for today's topic, it's better to be aware of data structures such as uh, linked list and binary tree trees. Uh, and I will not talk much about theory. Also, I will use a big old notation. Uh, for some solutions, I will compare Rust and Python code to demonstrate some Rust code pe peculiarities. Um, so some information about LeetCode. Uh, LeetCode is a popular online judge platform that you can use to practice your programming skills by solving coding problems. And it has nearly 2,000 problems. The list, the list is updated each day, I guess, because when I started one and a half year ago, it was, it were 1,300 um, problems. So this is a popular place for preparation for code interview. Probably it's a number one platform for that purpose, among others. And, and there are some convenient uh, problem sets dedicated to uh, interviews for big campus you see this uh, here and also there are sets of problems dedicated to specific topics like binary tree lace graphs so um, so what lead code gives us in terms of trust uh, language so it has it provides Rust 1.45.2 version, 2018 edition, and only two crates are available. Besides standard library, there are two crates: RAM and Lazy Static. I don't know why Lazy Static isn't mentioned here, but I I use it for one of my solutions. Maybe I should ping them and ask to add it here. Mm. So for, let's choose a problem, any problem. There are many languages you can use to write your solution. So uh, for each problem with code provides an empty method. Uh, the task is to implement the method body that returns a correct result. Um, Bleed code not always gives you a good signature. Uh, let I'll show you an example of a bad signature choice. Um, some other platforms uh, may provide you just input file and you have to uh, create and write an output file and that's it you don't need to deal with some buggy <laughs> signature 
um, their advantages and disadvantages of this approach. Um, this code approach is easy to start for, for starting. Um, personally, I chose lead code for three reasons. Uh, first, it's fast to start write code in Rust. Uh, I didn't want to start uh, learning Rust from learning a specific web framework or how to write uh, console applications. I just wanted to learn uh, standard liber uh, standard Rust li library and most basic structures and functions. Um, second reason I wanted to learn fundamental algorithms and improve improve my problem solving skills. Uh, the third, I wanted to prepare for code interviews and this code is a good place for that. Okay, let's start from the easy one, binary search. It's a well-known task and often asked uh, at code interviews. Uh, the task is given an array of integer numbers, which is sorted in ascending order, and an integer target write a function to search target in the, in the array. If target exists, then uh, return is index, otherwise return minus one. And uh, obviously, algorithm should, um, not obviously, but algorithm should uh, has, should have uh, big O of log n uh, time complexity. Um, binary, search uh, binary search is an algorithm based on the idea to compare the target value to the middle element of the array. So uh, let's uh, see the demo. Um, we we have we define first we find middle element. If the middle element is equal to target element, we are done. We return the index of the middle element. If the target uh, value is uh, smaller than the middle element, we a repeat search on the left subarray. And if the target value is larger than, than a middle, the middle element, we repeat search on the in the right subarray. So and repeat it until we find target element or our pointers meet each other. Uh, first uh, let me show you uh, Python solution uh, for of this problem. So first check is uh, if the array is empty, just return minus one. Then I uh, define two pointers, left and right, and in a while loop, I calculate the index of a middle element in, and then compare the middle element with the target value. So if we, if we find target, then return the index, uh, the middle index. If target is less, then change the right uh, pointer and go to another iteration. If target is greater, change the left pointer e and move on. So if our pointers met each other, we can say that there is no target element and we return the the, circle, uh, the loop ends and we return minus one. Quite simple algorithm and the code itself. So there are some uh, Rust specific things in Rust implementation. 
first of all, I have to check uh, it's um, the array is empty. Uh, it's okay. Uh, then I define two pointers, and this is an extra check. Uh, I do this check because for some case, uh, for one case, I can get right index negative. Uh, since the right is um, a U, uh, U size variable, I'll get uh, an exception because I can't assign minus one to right. So this is why I do this extra check. Uh, this check uh, can immediately uh, give an answer if the target element is way too too small or way too big. Mm. Okay, the formula how we uh, calculate how we compute the middle index, the, the index of the middle element. Um, the naive formula is that is written here, but this formula can cause a integer overflow in case if uh, our input array is too large, it's too long, two billion <laughs> elements. So this formula. Mm, prevents us from integer overflow and give you extra points at pot interview. Um, that's pretty much of this problem. Do you have questions? Don't hesitate to ask. Uh, let's try. Okay. To show the difference between runtime of Rust and Python. I like it a lot. <laughs> um, two orders of difference. Okay, if there is no, if there are no questions, I can go to the next stuff. One question. Hello. Uh, Evgeny, am I audible? Um, somebody is speaking and I can't understand. Yeah, your background's louder than you are. Uh, it, it was it a question or just a random speech? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I was asking. Uh, hello, I'm audible now? Yeah, I, I can hear you now better. OK, good. so just I joined late. So is there any possibility in lead code that uh, we get, uh, uh, just like Rust and Lizer, we get auto-populate or uh, something like maybe index, like you just uh, test dot and method terms and all these syntax highlighting, just like Rust and Lizer in visual code. Is that possible here? I don't understand you. Sorry. No, no. Just Maybe like you work, just like you work in Visual Code and Rust and Lizer is there, right? Yeah, lazy, lazy static is there. Yes. No, he's asking about Rust Analyzer, like ah, the, Rust, uh, LSP uh, Um, in, no, code. no, nothing, nothing similar okay. here, and there is no debug in contrast to Python. Uh, and probably Java. Uh, for Py you can debug your Python code, which is very convenient. And usually, I write um, solutions in T line, so it's <laughs> good IDE with all whistles and rings and bells. And I also write um, tests here before I submit my solution. OK, so lead code doesn't give you the like a test framework or anything that you can write against to uh, write your own tests based on the description? You you can uh, put a test case here. 
but I find it's not convenient uh, as a okay. first way okay. to try something. But they don't give you a test module that's already written that you could run on your own IDE. Oh, nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, move to next topic, linked list. Oh, we got um, a request to increase the IDE font size. Uh, you mean uh, the web browser? Uh, is it better now? Uh, Carlos, would you like to clarify? Excuse me, I, 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 okay, okay, nice. I think uh, more would be too big. Yeah. yeah I, I think you can probably leave it as it is right now. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, I know uh, before we move to the ne next task, I know that Rust uh, Slice has a built in binary search, which is very convenient. Uh, uh, but at the interview, you have to implement these methods yourself manually to, to demonstrate your coding skill abilities. Uh, for some other problems may include binary search as a sub um, sub problem. So I usually use uh, built in binary search there when it's not the topic of the problem. Okay. Uh, linked list. Uh, uh, linked list is a linear collection of data elements where each element points to to the next. So there is a popular problem. Um, in, um, middle of the linked list. It's uh, given the head of singly linked list uh, returns the middle node of the linked list. Uh, if there are two middle nodes, return the second middle node. Okay, uh, this is uh, the definition of list node in, for Python, and uh, the algorithms. Um, um, is uh, to solve this problem, I apply fast and slow pointers methods. When I traverse the list with uh, one pointer, I make another pointer that traverses twice as fast as uh, the first one. So the first pointer reaches the end of the list, uh, and slow pointer must be must point to the, the middle element of the list. So um, Python solution is quite straightforward. First, I, I define two pointers, slow and fast. And second, I traverse using while loop. And for slow pointer, I just uh, assign a next element. For the, for the fast pointer, I assign next of the next. So it moves uh, twice as fast as the slow. And when I reach the end of their List, I just return the slow uh, pointer. Mm. Simple and nothing but a thing. Uh, Rust solution is similar. Uh, I just have to. Where is Rust? Uh, I just have to make extra steps to to reach uh, properties of the of the node. So here is uh, implementation of the of the list node uh, 
<laughs> on lead code and this uh, implementation is, isn't good. This is uh, because box doesn't allow to have me multiple pointers at uh, element of uh, the list, multiple pointers to a node. And so I apply the same approach. I have two pointers, slow and fast, and move along the list. And eventually, my slow uh, pointer points to the middle of the uh, list. And unfortunately, I have to clone the half of the list because um, I cannot move. Uh, I cannot move the node because I have a shared two references to to the full structure. So the only solution is to to make a copy half of this. And I don't know how to to make it without cloning, even in unsafe rust. I guess it's not possible with this signature with this uh, definition of uh, list node. So that's uh, uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, lead code because they use this um, type everywhere with every linked list problem. Fortunately, many linked list problems uh, Mm, ask you to to return a new list or return something else rather than list. Uh, so I can live with that. <laughs> uh, and still, Rust solution is quite fast. I don't know how they benchmark solution, but for many problems, I got zero milliseconds as a runtime. <laughs> Mm. Uh, any questions on this problem? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I know like the standard solution to this problem is to have like a fast and a slow pointer, but if you don't think about that in a like, in like the heat of an interview, can you just have one pointer and just like count the nodes and then start again? Um, yeah. Is that it's... still O of N? Um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, approximately O, big O from N, but in details it's just one uh, traverse along the uh, the list, so not you don't need to uh, to move twice, right? Okay. 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 And then so, I guess I have one more question. Okay. Um, so I, I know the answer to this question, but I just want to still ask it so people can learn. <laughs> um, so on line five, um, the next pointer is an option to a box of a list node. Why can't it be an option to a list node? Why does that be boxed? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't ask why it's... Uh... Why why lead code shows this uh, to this specific type for to represent the node? I don't know. For for trees, they choose another approach, which is better. That, that allows us to have more uh, pointers to, to share pointers. I will show it later. But I can't answer. Yeah. I can I can. Does anybody else know? I can I can explain why. Okay. Yeah. So the so the reason is if you didn't have an indirection through a pointer or a reference or something else, um, you would have you wouldn't be able to know the compile time. Sorry, the size of compile time of a list node because it would be infinitely large. Um, so you need to insert indirection here. Um, oh, yeah, the box, which is a pointer. Um, and if you were wondering how I know that, it's in the Rust book. 
very early yeah. on it talks about this. Um, so an interviewer might ask you why. So that's why you say. Yeah, my, uh, I remember. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> um, recall this. Okay. Thank you for your note. Uh, I'm moving, move to another linked list problem. Um, a reverse linked list. Okay. I won't show you uh, the Python code because it's very similar to Rust. The problem is uh, given the head of simply linked list, reverse the list, and return the reverse list. So this is, I need to make a new list and return it. Um, uh, it's, <laughs> the solution is quite tricky, was quite tricky uh, to me. The algorithm uses three pointers and uh, it's easy to screw with the three pointers. <laughs> Uh, to solve, um, to reverse the list, I have to traverse along the list and change uh, the current node next pointer to, to, to point to the previous node. Since we don't keep previous node, we have to have reference to the previous node. That's, uh, so we have a variable previous, pref, point as the preference, pre previous node, we have current um, node, and uh, we have next node to, to save, to save uh, next ele element, uh, to save um, the reference to the next element before changing the current node next. Um, maybe it would be better if I show you um, diagram. Okay. So we have three pointers. So current pointer points to the head of the list. So first, I save next pointer in in the next um, variable, right? Um, then I choose current's next pointer point at the previous uh, node. Um, in the beginning, previous is none, so it will point at, to the none. Nothing. And then I change uh, previous pointer to point to the current element here, right? So uh, since I unwrap current element, I have to wrap it again into option. And the last step. I change current element to point to the next, which I saved before um, in the very beginning. Uh, looks very tricky. <laughs> and maybe it's better to, uh, to do tracing to understand that, but I can't show you uh, on lead code. So I, I'll repeat all this for actions in the while loop until we reach uh, the end of the list. And when we reach the end, the head of the new reversed list will be kept in, in pref pointer, in pref variable, so I just return. Uh, that's, that's it, that's the solution. Uh, time complexity of the solution is because of n, because we have to uh, pass all no, list elements. And phase complexity is 
big power from his cons, basically, because we just need three extra variables. Any questions? Uh, there is actually one question in the chat here. OK. Um, it says, I have noted that interior interior mutability, uh, it is crucial to resemble OO patterns to problems. But what would be a rusty approach to making to, to make that kind of alternative solution not so OOP-ish? OO problems. I can't say anything about OO. Oh, oh, uh, you mean, you mean uh, object-oriented problems or what? I don't understand. OO patterns. Yeah, I, I think that is referring to object-oriented patterns. Did you want to clarify, Carlos? Or? Yeah, object-oriented. Well, I can't answer. <laughs> rusty. Well, interior mutability is quite rusty approach. <laughs> <laughs> well, like when I see all these option boxes, it it makes me think they're just trying to implement pointers in safe Rust, like using an arc or something like that would be more natural for Rust. If you actually have to have shared pointers to something, yeah. or like maybe you could write it in a way where you could just do mem swap to move the move the references around. I guess oh. it's hard because you have to keep track of both ends while you're while you're disconnecting and reconnecting. But you could. I don't know if you could somehow, s yeah, I don't know. You still have it to do a three-way swap. But. Yeah. Mm, I can't comment <laughs> more. <laughs> Sorry. OK, let's move to another topic. Next topic is trees, binary trees. Okay, a binary, um, a binary tree is a tree data structure in which each node has at most two children, uh, which are referred to as the left child and the right child. So the, the problem, same tree, giving the roots of two binary trees, P and Q, write a function to check if they are same or not. So two binary trees are considered the same if they are structurally identical and the nodes have the same value. So these two trees are the same, they are identical, and these two trees are not because even they contain the same values, they have different structure. And these two, no these two trees um, also have different structure. Uh, a Python solution is recursive. I am given two nodes, and I have to return true if the trees are the same, otherwise false. Uh, first of all, I check P and Q are both none, and if so, I return immediately return true because I consider uh, none empty trees are equal. Um, so if one of them is none and the other is not none, it's obviously not equal trees, not equal nodes, so I, I return false. Uh, then I compare the nodes' values, and if values are not identical, I return false. I'm done here. And finally, 
all previous checks are passed. I have non uh, have some not nullable nodes and their values are identical. I have to check uh, both left and right subtrees of both nodes. So I, I apply the same function for right child, right subtrees and left subtrees. And if both uh, calls return true, I decide, okay, these trees are the same, are equal. Problem solved. Uh, okay, let's see Rust solution. Oh. My first solution was uh, st similar to to Python. Um, let me get a, a different solution. Yeah. This is better. So I I didn't up, um, do many X. I um, decided to use more idiomatic way to to make checks. So I I just my solution is a simple match expression, which checks uh, a tuple of P and Q. If uh, both P and P Q are known, I return true. Um, if both are sum, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention uh, implementation of the tree structure on leaf code. So they made they have uh, nested smart pointers. RC is. Uh, reference counter that allows um, us to have multiple um, uh, enables multiple ownership in contrast to box we have <laughs> for this and ref cell is a smart pointer that allows us to mutate data even there are immutable references to that data an option is needed to to represent man value. So when I test P and Q, um, they contain some data. I get the inner node, the node itself, <laughs> this uh, structure, and compare their values and. In, if it's positive, if its values are identical, I um, call, I do recursion. I call the same function, uh, get left, sub, sub three, uh, write the tree for both uh, nodes. Mm -hmm. It's similar to Python call. So this is default branch. In case of if just one of the nodes is none, and the other is some. Um, so the time complexity is big O of n because we have to um, traverse uh, all, all mm, visit all the nodes of the of of both trees. So the end is the number of all nodes. <laughs> and space complexity is uh, log, uh, big O of log N for best case when R trees are balanced, and big O of N in worst case when R trees are unbalanced. So it's just R trees are simply become 
limp list out trees, limp list. <laughs> um, this was my first solution, and when I submitted and checked other um, submissions, uh, um, I found Check it. Uh, found very simple <laughs> uh, solution that you noticed in the beginning. Oh, there is. Uh. Ah, I can write it myself right now. Oh, the, here is. Uh, it just equal uh, uh, equality operator. And I guess it works because uh, RC implements partial equality trade, and RefCell also implements partial equality that uh, trade that allows us to use the quality operator and just use it <laughs> to compare two trees. And it's quite amazing. <laughs> I was I was surprised to see this solution. Any questions or comments? Uh, there were a couple in the chat here. Um, so one was, okay. does the code uh, specify the function signature? OK, let me see. Uh, let me Okay. Is it possible to see the most popular solution once you submit your own accepted solution? Um, uh, I don't understand what is most popular because everybody writes its own solution and there is always difference between solutions and how to compare them. Uh, at submission page, submission result, you can compare your solution with others in terms of runtime and memory consumption. So my solution <laughs> isn't the best. Uh, um, so um, it's uh, you can see so like here the best solution and the best solution uses stack <laughs> for that. Pretty interesting. I I haven't analyzed this approach, and it's uh, it's um, fruitful to see other people's solutions. You always learn something new, like P equal Q. <laughs> um, for us, language mm, there are not. M many solutions sometimes my i uh, i often notice that my solution is the only for for particular problem i i think the most popular language is python and java yes here Yes, I agree that uh, lit list are is are is rare used data structure because in theory um, they allow to they allow to remove uh, and remove insert and insert elements fast compared to array, but. Uh, um, the nodes are kept in in heap, and every allocation is costly. And because of that, linked lists are not popular in real programming. But there are some structures that where linked lists are necessary, like uh, L L U, uh, like uh, I forgot list. Uh, least um, uh, recent used uh, 
Uh, it's present. Oh, I forgot how it's called. Mm. Least recent used cache. So there, this is a cache where uh, which has limited uh, size, and when you add a new element to this cache, you have to, and the cache is full, you have to remove uh, last used, or not last used, uh, the element which, uh, the most, the oldest element from the, from the, uh, this cache. So internally, this structure uses uh, doubly linked feed. Okay, what else? Uh, ex exorcism IO. I never heard of this platform. <laughs> Interesting. Most popular solution. Uh, also, I can say um, there is discussion or top and where people post own solutions with explanations and you can vote for particular solution and you can uh, start it by vote <laughs> and find most popular right most popular Ah, okay. I, I think that's what I what I had in mind when I asked. Oh, the okay, okay, okay. Oh yeah. So my answer. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you can't find uh, most popular among submissions. Right? There is no race. So partially yes and no. Uh, L. Are you little? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, you can use VEC because we know that uh, uh, we can implement a limited sized uh, list uh, uh, in a vector to keep indexes in a vector. Okay. Uh, what else? Move to the next. Um, next uh, three binary tree problem uh, is um, Uh, let me find it. Oh, yeah. A lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. Given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in the tree. Um, so the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes, P and Q, as the lowest node that has both P and Q as descendants, uh, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. Okay, let me demonstrate on diagram. Yeah, so for nodes there is a binary tree and for nodes one and seven lowest common ancestor is three uh, for one and two lowest common ancestor is seven mm -hmm. uh, nothing difficult i guess so how to find the lowest common ancestor uh, uh, the solution is to find both nodes P and Q in the tree and bubble them up along the, the tree and the node where both P and Q meet each other is the lowest common ancestor. So let me show you the 
Окей. Нотс 1 and 7. So first uh, I find node 1 uh, and bubble it up. And then I try to find the second node Q and then find it here and bubble it up and both meet it meet meet each other at node three and three. So the three is the lowest common ancestry. Um, I hope you <laughs> can understand my explanation. Uh, and I return three as a as a, the answer. Um, so how I find a particular node? I use uh, re recursion. Uh, let, let's see the Python code. Uh, maybe. I don't think we should see Python code because it's very similar to Rust. So, uh, uh, here I have root of the three and two of uh, two nodes. Uh, note that uh, P and Q always exist in the tree. Okay. Uh, first, I check uh, recursion exit condition. So if uh, I get a root as uh, none, I have to return none. Then I make checks if a root is equal to P or Q. If yes, I return the node itself, the root node. So basically, I return of one of the part nodes. Let's say one in this case. So, uh, um. So then, if uh, P and Q are not equal to root, I unwrap root and try to to search in left and right subtrees. And after that, I check left and right. If both left and right are not uh, uh, have something, have nodes, that means I. I've got both nodes at that level, and I can say that current node is lowest common ancestor, and I return it. So I have to cons uh, construct option again because I unwrapped it here. Uh, so in case if uh, one of the nodes uh, right, left or right is some and the other is none. I just return uh, the node which is mm, has something <laughs> to explain in English. Mm. Uh, so these uh, nodes will bubble until we meet, uh, we have two nodes are not known simultaneously. Um, I have this problem on, at one interview and <laughs> uh, I uh, chose a different approach. I um, make path, I build path from root to the target nodes, P and Q, and compare to path until I found the difference between path and at the latest element of the both paths which are equal is the lowest 
who come and assist her. Uh, in contrast to their solution, uh, the solution we've passed requires uh, some uh, requires more space for to get answer. Uh, so time complexity is big O from O of n, and space complexity is big O of n uh, because we use recursion. And recursion for each call we use uh, we have to save a frame into a stack. That's why uh, it depends on the size of the tree. Let me check. Chat. Okay, there is no questions. There are no questions. Uh, I hope you understand me and <laughs> my explanation. I was just wondering about the, uh, like, on the, the constraint section, they say that there is up to 10 to the 5 nodes. So does that fit in the normal Rust stack? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. maybe maybe a problem. Okay. I don't know if they actually check that. But. Let's submit. Okay, it's success. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the good point, right? It's quite big. Ah, no. I mean, if the tree is balanced, do you expect like log of ten to the five? Yeah, ten ten to five. Yeah, this is this recursion is. depth. But worst case, it could be much worse. Yeah. No, this value, but this right defines our size of this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, do I have time? Um, I have two more problems related to dynamic programming. If you... Um, I think maybe we could go through one. I don't think we have enough time for two. Okay. Uh, okay. One problem. Uh, dynamic programming uh, or DP is an algorithmic technique or solving an optimization problem by breaking it down into simpler sub-problems and utiliz utilizing the fact that the optimal solution to the overall problem depends upon the optimal solution to its sub-problems. Whenever we solve a sub-problem, we cache its result so we don't need to repeat solving the same sub-problems over and over. Instead, we can return a, the same result from the cache. So um, this technique of storing the results of already solved sub-problems is called memorization. To me, DP problems is one of the hardest types of problems because sometimes I just, it's hard to make up a recursive formula. Okay, the problem house Robert. Uh, you are a professional robber planning to rob houses along a street. Each house has a certain amount of money stashed inside and you and the only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security system connected and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into uh, one into on the same night. So given an integer array uh, nums representing the amount of money of each house return the maximum amount of money you can rob tonight without alerting the police uh, how i usually solve this kind of problems 
I manually calculate answer for first and small subs problems. Uh, often three answers are enough. And they try to guess uh, a general recursive formula. When or if I can make it up, I implement this formula in a computer language and do calculation, do computer, and return result. So let's re uh, apply this approach to house robber problem. Uh, so let's say I have one house uh, and the answer is obvious. So this house keeps $100, so I return, I get this, I rob this house and return uh, 100 other other answer case if i have two houses i can either rob first house or second so i choose the house with the maximum amount of money uh, i'm in between them so i rob the second house and get 200 dollars uh, case if I have three houses, um, I can rob the first and the third houses, um, or I can rob the middle one, one just one house. So I choose the sum, the maximum of the sum, or. Um, uh, the combined money of the, of the first and the third house and the second house. So, uh, and here I can I can note that um, M one is basically uh, the answer for their case of one house. So that's why I substitute M1 with A1 and, and then get answer here. Oh. Okay. The, the case of four houses. Quite tricky. <laughs> I am trying to, to guess uh, the formula, so bear with me, <laughs> is my explanation. So uh, when I have one more house, I can decide uh, to rob it. If I rob it, so I cannot rob this house uh, because it's adjacent to the first, and I have to assume, I consider this task when I have um only two two houses so that means we, i can know that uh, the semi uh, know that this is the same as um, the answer for the case of two houses so just substitute uh, this expression makes with uh, A2 answer. Um, uh, you can know that this expression is the same as uh, for a uh, case of three houses. I just substitute with the A3 answer. And then I substitute with real cash, real money, and get the answer. So, from this uh, formulas, I can conclude the general formula um, to, to, which allows me to solve uh, um, the problem for to get answer for the for any number of thousands. So I just have to implement this formula in recursive formula in my function body and return the result. Uh, go to
רצו להתקרות. אוקיי. So I have to keep previous two answers for uh, to get to get the, the next answer. I mean the, the previous and the previous of the previous. Uh, so oh, this is trivial check that uh, for a trivial input, Here, uh, uh, the vector that keeps two previous values. And I traverse uh, the vector, the input array, uh, and calculate the uh, answer for each, uh, for each case, for, for example, uh, For case, uh, if I have one house uh, where uh, the first element keeps uh, the money for the first house, for, for that one house, then I calculate the uh, answer for the case of two houses, three houses, and so on. And eventually, uh, uh, my answer will be the last answer of this sequence. Mm. <laughs> My explanation is quite confusing. Uh, I hope you can get it. Uh, so the time complexity is big O of L because uh, I have to uh, calculate all cases. all um, answer for all um, houses number. And phase complexity is constant because I just allocate um, the vector of two elements. Mm. That's it. Let's check chat. Uh, no questions in the chat. Uh, submit okay and still one time is not is zero milliseconds <laughs> something is broken this benchmark it's not quite sensitive for rust I guess that's it uh, time is up I guess uh, yeah we've got uh, about 15 minutes left uh, do we have any like quick questions here or Um, I have uh, one uh, question. If anybody wants to practice uh, co um, uh, problem solving together and how it usually happens at interview where interviewee uh, usually writes solution and explains its uh, uh, his or her solution loud so maybe somebody wants to join me and we can uh, practice together on lead code in rust or python whatever language you choose <laughs> that sounds very interesting i might take you up on that offer <laughs> okay um yeah so i want to just quickly um go through the new segment and then get to my announcement with the uh, little bit of remaining time that we have left. I'm sorry, I don't think we're going to have time for like a free talk or anything like that. So uh, if you, uh, you want, I'm just going to share my screen now. So is everything good? Can everyone see my screen? Yes. All right. So uh, here's our news stories that I collected. I only collected a few because I wanted to leave time for um, 
the announcement today. Um, so we've got the Stack Overflow developer survey. I'm not going to click into it. Um, you probably already know what this is about if you've been following Rust for a while now, but uh, Rust got uh, most loved programming language again for the sixth year in a row, which is pretty cool. Um, we also have this uh, push for GAT stabilization. So I have uh, spoken in the past um, at a previous meetup about uh, GATs and I've talked about some of the ways that they can be used. Uh, here again they're talking about streaming iterators. Um, so this will allow you to write some, some faster code and uh, generally it seems like a pretty uh, pretty nice feature. Um, so yeah, they're, it looks like they're getting close to uh, trying to you know, get this thing stabilized. Uh, let's skip over this for now. And the last story I have here is just a small tweet, but it looks like um, Rust Edition 2021 is coming soon, so just a heads up in case uh, you want to give that a try. Uh, obviously, you know, you might want to consider like migrating co your code base to the, the new edition, or maybe maybe not. But yeah, just uh, just thought it'd be good to let people know about that. And that brings us to the announcement, which is that the Vancouver Rust meetups are now uh, in a partnership with uh, Manning Publications. So. I actually have some notes here. Uh, so everybody can get 35% off. Uh, this is not a paid promotion, by the way. <laughs> but if you want, um, oh, that's the wrong one. Let's post the code here. Uh, I can probably stop presenting now, too. But that's the discount code. Uh, that's for any product on the Manning website. So that's 35% off. Um, he also sent me this link. Let me see if I can get that. That's the link to the home page of the site. Uh, it looks like they're currently having like a sale right now. And uh, I, I tr before you try, <laughs> I did check. You cannot stack the discounts, sadly. So you can't get 80% off any books, but it will take the best of the uh, two discounts. Um, so right now, uh, this discount code that I just sent is good for books that are less than $50 in price, um, but anything above that, it'll just use the, uh, the sale price. Uh, the sale is lasting until August 22nd, though, so uh, after that, uh, this code will be probably a lot more useful. And they also wanted me to send along this link. Uh, or actually, I guess I can't really, I can't really copy this, unfortunately. Let me, let me open this in a new tab or something. Here we go. So here is a free ebook from them called a Rust Sampler. Uh, you can check that out as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the, the only other uh, thing I want to mention is that in the future, for some of our meetups, we may be getting uh, speakers uh, from, uh, from Manning, and there will be people who wrote the, uh, the books that they're selling. So we'll be getting authors like uh, Carol Nichols, uh, Tim McNamara, and uh, yeah, like pretty, uh, I guess, I wouldn't say like famous names, but they're kind of big names if you've been reading a lot of like Rust books from Manning, or if, you're, or if you've uh, been browsing like Reddit, those names tend to pop up from time to time. So yeah, uh, look forward to that if, uh, if we can, yeah, if, if we can get any of them to come and speak. I, I actually don't know if that's necessarily going to happen, but yeah, I've been in talks with uh, the Manning people and seems like, uh, yeah, it's something that we can definitely have soon after our next, uh, next few meetups. Um, 
so yeah, with that, uh, we have eight minutes left. Uh, if anyone wants to talk about anything or has any feedback, any questions, questions about the the new uh, deal that we've got going on. Otherwise, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the meetup. So I just want to thank everyone for coming today. And uh, I'll, again, I'll be posting the links to the news segment stuff. Uh, Evgeny, will you be sending me your slides? Uh, some, some of uh, some slides are not mine, so um, I have to ask before I share. Them. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can just make a pull request to the uh, to to our talks repo, and you know, if you don't want to, that's also fine. But I'll be okay. uploading the, uh, the the video recording to our YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, I'll post the. Uh, the discount code as well to the meetup event. I have a quick shout out here. So I'll be giving the talk next at the next uh, meetup. Um, and uh, so this talk is uh, for, obviously it's Rust, but it's comparing it to Java for anybody who's a backend web developer. So feel free to bring friends you want to convince over <laughs> to Rust, um, specifically Java developers. Um, so I'll be comparing and contrasting a web service implemented in both languages using Spring Boot and Actix. Um, I'll try to make it as realistic as possible so the, the services should be a little bit more than just a CRUD app. Um, it should maybe run some business queries and crunch some numbers and then I'll be um, I'll show the benchmark results afterwards. Um, but the yeah, the idea is to showcase the developer experience um, for a web developer using Rust for the first time who only knows really just mostly Java, how much, how difficult is it to onboard, how many like mental loops you have to go through, um, and hopefully the benchmarks will show that it's worth it, um, but that's where you guys should judge um, after the presentation. Cool. Yeah, very nice. And uh, nice plug. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll definitely try and bring some of our programmers who are very into OOP and Java. I'll try and get yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, bring so. web developers. <laughs> they will benefit the most. Uh, you guys too as well, but web probably better. Okay, I don't have a lot of web developers, unfortunately, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find anyone. All right, cool. So unless there's any last minute objections or comments or questions, then yeah, that concludes today's Rust Meetup. And once again, thank you all very much for coming. And uh, yeah, exciting stuff uh, coming up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Evergy. That was, that was interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.